as you can see here my tent is out of the flood channel which is a really important tip so when you're pitching a tent for obvious reasons choose convex ground where it's got good drainage around it it's high so if it does pull around you you're going to be sweet as but that just goes to show you know 200 mils you need to really think about your campsite selection you can't just throw it down and be laying prey almost uh, the old copper spur big agnes going okay after using the tr2 plus cedar summit it was a brand new tent this one has been used and abused and she's been on a few rides <laughs> so she started to leak like a sieve so i'm doing all sorts to try and prevent the the water ingress but yeah this rain when it's heavy rain you really got to think about what you're doing Oh, this climb's brutal. Absolute doozy. Full pack, full of gear, rifle, at least nine days worth of food. Oh, far out. She's tough stuff. Woo. Woo. Almost uh, finished the doozy of the climb. She's been hard work, as usual, blowing like a steam train. It's now raining, and I'm in the clag super peaceful not too much further to my base camp probably only another less than an hour so it's kind of good because then i'm there for a couple days and then the weather comes good on monday so it's friday today and then i'll be up onto the tops hunting for chamois bucks hopefully fingers crossed Well, that was lucky. I um, was hitting up the wrong spur. Uh, visibility was good enough so I could see 
uh, that spot height that I was looking for. I kept thinking that it was this other one, but it was it was not. So it's up that way. Got the right spur, got on the right route. I was a bit lucky, otherwise I would turn into a doozy. Sweet, so head up there, there's clay starting to roll over, it's not ideal, especially for route finding. Um, so I'll assess as I go along. If I can't find the route, I'll just uh, base camp it up and then just hunker down. Far out, what a day, massive day. So glad to be in the tent right now. Just had a feed of Radix, so 800 cows. Such a good, such a good brand and product. Um, I highly rate it. Just gives you the bang for buck, really. And for the, the energy that I'm expending at the moment, certainly need it. So today, did over a thousand meters of vert, and then I've ended up dropping 600 meters um, to get more into the chamois country around that kind of 1300 to 1500 meter mark and then hunting, tomorrow I'm going to be hunting kind of uh, guts, bluff, bluff system somewhat, but more, more guts, like scrubby guts, and they love that. So yeah, if you're on the coast, that's, that's generally how I do it. It just requires a lot of up and down and, and really be patient. So slowly, like be methodical as you work through each gut, because um, they literally can be anywhere. <laughs> um, but no, gosh, it's been a hard day, real, real hard day, looking forward to a bit of sleep. And then hopefully tomorrow, can see a few chamois, but the weather forecast is looking mean. So I'm fizzing about that, as I mentioned earlier. <laughs> but nah, I'm gonna hit the hay and I'll catch you guys tomorrow.
Another day done and dusted. It's a rather uneventful day. Still seeing no chamois. Had a bit of a run in with our uh, Rakai helicopters. Looks like he's uh, doing well for himself if he's just doing some uh, waro in a spare time. So he pretty much hunted the faces in the creek that I was, I was in and pretty much spooked everything. Um, he didn't manage to get that, that stack that spooked just um, near camp. But yeah, he hunted all the faces and zigzagged around. And, ah, hey, <laughs> if he's got the dosh and he can just drop it like it's hot, then hey, fair play to him. Um, yeah, at least he's not shooting in his own backyard at use. That's one thing you can say is good. But, yeah, what a machine to operate in this kind of country and just for a bit of fun. So, yeah, he looks like he got nothing as well. Yeah, so I'm a bit, a bit dejected, a wee bit. Still see no chamois, no bug. So, the search continues for a second 10 inch bug. But, that, hey, that's what hunting's all about. It's all about the challenge. And that's what I love about it. It doesn't just come easy, especially on the coast. So tomorrow is going to be a bit of a mystery whether or not the bush is going to play ball or it's going to be just an absolute slog getting down to the valley floor. And then if someone could hook a brother up and give me a ride over to the other valley where my truck is, that would be awesome. But hopefully I don't have to wait too long. I'm hoping I can meet someone along the track or something and just get chatting. Yeah, sweet ass. So I'm going to retire again. And tomorrow is going to be pretty boring. I don't think I'm going to see anything on the walkout because it's pretty much only a couple hundred meters and then into the bush and then just deal with it. <laughs> Alright, evening too. Catch As I'm about to get some water with the old platypus uh, reservoir, tell you a wee story about last week. Had an absolute doozy, proper doozy. I was uh, scrub bashing up this ridge on the coast and there was just no water, like I was just sweating buckets. So there was just no water. And then eventually I found this little puddle and I was dehydrated at the stage, so I was in bad shape. I found this little puddle and it was just like a little mud, mud kind of puddle got the water out like kind of you know just skimmed the water off the off the mud puddle it was black I filtered it through kind of two merino shirts and then I boiled it it was black and I just sent it down the hatch rehydrated me and I cracked on <laughs> I'll tell you what that water was some of the worst water I've ever drunk in it's like imagine marinate water in like old like leather boots and let it sit there for like a year and then drink it. It was absolutely revolting. But kept me going, kept me charging, staying alive. <laughs> one from the memory box, that one. I didn't film it because I was in bad shape. But anyway, good stuff. And then another story as well, like on the last big mush, I did get picked up, which was freaking awesome. So I was tactical about trying to hitch a ride back over to the other valley. And I was like, right, I'll get a, I'll get a ute. I'm sure a ute will pick me up. So this uh, sedan went past, I was like, no, oh, no, I just pretended like I was playing my pack. And then, uh, then a ute was coming over the bridge, I put my thumb out, picked me up first time. What a lad. That dude was a lad. Uh, Frickin' awesome. But no, uh, it all worked out in the end. But uh, I got badly sunburned on that trip as well. <laughs> Took me about bloody two weeks to get over that sunburn. Man, I haven't been sunburned like that in a long time. I'm brown skin, but that toasted me, that snow day. Far out, that toasted me. Sugar. But anyway, right, tensile, tensile set up. That's the go. I'm gonna tuck in, get a feed going, and then just rest up. And then hopefully tomorrow the clay clears and onto it.
end of another day on the hill. Heading back to camp. I've seen a few animals, same deer I saw this morning and last night. I've seen a chamois and a kid. Uh, another stag. Uh, and that's about it for the uh, evening hunt. Last lots of country. But yeah, no, just not seen a huge amount of mature animals. So tomorrow, I'm gonna walk out. A bit of, bit of hard yards, last chance buck. I hopefully just see some mature animals. That's more what I'm after. I'll try to see some mature animals, but pretty slim pickings. But disappointing. So so much country, so much country being glassed, moving through. But nonetheless, it's bloody awesome, eh? Bloody awesome to be in this country. Just enjoying the beauty of this landscape, recharging the soul. Freaking awesome. That freaking is awesome. If only I could turn the camera around. <laughs> Be clear as day where I am. Yeah, nah, good as gold. Oh, well, guys, I'll catch you tomorrow. As forecasted, it was a bloody rough night. I barely got any sleep. I know my face looks like it's got no sleep, but I had no sleep. A few weird dreams here and there, but gosh, it was windy. Tent was flexing like a sit giraffe. Some of the guy lines were getting ripped out of the ground. It is what it is. Character building stuff in the mountains. When you backpack solo hunting, that's what it's all about, eh? But anyway, I've got to ride it out for another 24 hours. Oh no, 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 no correction, probably 12. I think I should be good, but oh, she's a doozy. Time to get some podcasts on and just try and relax. Maybe get a bit of a nap here and there if I can. Weather's broken a wee bit after a bit of snow, sleet, and rain, everything in between. But yeah, no, it's not good. No place I'd rather be. Bit of character building stuff, but I think you need to endure a bit of hard times so you've got an appreciation when there are good times. Just a bit of a fundamental kind of principle, I think. More people need time in the hills, the suffering and sleepless nights and having to put in the hard yards you know, life's too easy i think sometimes for some people a bit of southern alps therapy would do the trick i reckon but here's here's old camp done well flight's got a bit of damage from the wind it's been pretty chaotic as i forecasted or as it was forecasted so yeah it's about lunchtime so i'm gonna have a bit of feed and then we'll see how the weather goes it's kind of cleared a little bit so fingers crossed we might get evening hunting
Another carriage building mission, packing up camp, ready to kind of head home, do the big walkout. Been a bit of a disappointing trip, we've seen heaps of deer, it's all just been spikers, pines, three, four year olds, nothing mature at all, we've done heaps of miles and covered lots of country. Rather disappointing, but that's hunting, it teaches you failure, it teaches you hard work, and it teaches you kind of perseverance. So hopefully you never know, you never know, it might be next weekend in a month's time, that goal will be achieved, so you just gotta keep charging. Anyway, I'm just gonna get on with the, the pack up and then just smoke it. Finally made it down to Fiordland in Wapiti country. Frickin' fizzing, fizzing. Awesome, so we're gonna do the typical, smash it up to the tops today, get a couple good days in, and then the weather's just gonna pack in and be typical Fiordland styles. But man, so good just to be here. Hopefully see a few Wapiti and who knows, may see that nice mature eight plus year old. Fingers crossed, but it's gonna be a bloody good adventure nonetheless. All right, I'm gonna get, get on and get charging. So far I'm getting the old Fjordland experience. Just came down from the tops after seeing a few cows and bulls. It's pretty cool. Got some nice close up photographs of a young bull and there's another kind of three and a half year old bull as well. A few cows kind of dotted around. Epic country, just spectacular. Probably some of the most scenic country I've ever hunted. Bloody awesome. Coming down from the tops is a bit, how you going? But now on the valley floor, safe and sound. I'm just going to head up valley, kind of make a camp for a few days and just try and hunt the, the head basins because there's front after front coming in the next three days. So just got to be hunker down, try to stay warm. But certainly it's awesome to be in this country and thoroughly enjoy myself. Well, I'm definitely getting my Fjordland experience. Wet and wonderful. Got the tent set up with the fly. Got a trench dug out so it doesn't flood. Because everywhere around here is pretty soaked. Trying to find a good dry campsite. It's a premium, so you might do a bit of work. Kind of picked a bit of high ground, so there's a few flood channels around it, so that's gonna help. But nonetheless, it's been a pretty good trip, real interesting. Kind of a few take home points is, Wapiti are way bigger bodied than Reds, so you've really got to adjust your eye. That's, um, that's probably a big takeaway. Another thing as well is they really just hunker down in the feed. 
So they're quite, they're quite, they're nowhere near as alert as reds. Uh, I guess that's probably because of hunting pressure, but gosh, I was watching one bull yesterday just tuck in for a good 10 minutes, like one spot. All I could see was this rump and he was just tucked in. Um, yeah, super interesting. Another take home point is they don't care about the weather because they are so used to it. So like when I was at the head basin um, yesterday, seeing you know, a good 10, 12 cows and a few little hinds in there as well, but they just didn't care. It was humming, humming rain and they just kept on feeding. So yeah, if you ever come to Fjordlands, probably two take home is the body is way bigger. So you've got to adjust your eye and then they will feed at any time of, any time of the day, no matter the conditions. Well, typically like deer time, but if it's raining, they're still going to be out feeding. Not like reds where they might be tucked up and can't be bothered, but yeah, very interesting. Nonetheless, I am going to get back into the tent and try and stay as dry as I can, because tomorrow is going to be a doozy. <laughs> well, that wraps up another mission in the hills. Eight days in Fjordland. It's been bloody awesome. Truly, truly epic. Getting up onto the tops, just spectacular country. You can't beat it. Ridge lines are just crazy. The contours don't do it justice. Gosh, there's some stuff that just looks absolutely gnarly, but you can do it. And there's other stuff that looks similar on a map, but no, no chance, no chance at all. But man, it's been awesome just seeing Whoppity up close. So I got up close to a few of those bulls and then heaps of cows. But disappointing, there's quite a few more cows than, than bulls. But hey, I guess you just got to work the block and kind of find them where they are. It's a bit different after the bugle. But yeah, definitely body sizes are way bigger than red. Uh, their behavior is slightly different because they're just not, they're not hunted as much. So nowhere near as alert as red deer on public lands that's easily accessible. Like these little bastards, bloody sand flies. I could sum them up with one word that starts with C. But I'm not saying that on the, this uh, video. <laughs> but nonetheless, it's been bloody awesome. Character building stuff. Last few days it's just been thunder, lightning, rain, sleet, everything in between. So it's been absolutely epic. Just been trying to stay dry. The sun came out for the last couple of hours, so I dried all my kit out. Got my camp set up there. Gonna get picked up in the boat tomorrow. And then it's just back, refurb, and then thinking about the next mission, which will be just around the next corner. But until then team, I'll see you in the next mission. Just got back from a pretty good morning hunt. I've seen about six chamois and 15 deer on the flats. I've shot about four deer recently, so I didn't need any meat. Uh, yeah, I've been doing a bit of management hunting. I haven't really been filming it. It's just been a lot of hard yards. But while I'm just uh, resting up, it's about to hum down with rain. I thought just a bit of story time. Why not? So in uh, this year, so April uh, 2022, I was over on the coast and I was uh, going along this pretty gnarly uh, ridge line and there's a section where yeah, you don't want to slip. So I didn't want to do it, so I down climbed it on the way in and then on the way out, I was like, I really don't want to do this because yeah, you slip, you're in big trouble. So I was searching, 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 couldn't find a route, so I was like, I have to do it, otherwise it's a mammoth uh, route to go the other way. So I managed to get up there blowing like a steam train, adrenaline pumping, and then it's like really fatigued. So then I made my way along the ridge line and I got to another section, which on the way in is a bit of a steep up climb, but it's pretty good, pretty good handholds. But I didn't want to down climb it because it was a bit too gnarly. Uh, yeah, 
and again, the consequences if you fall. So there was two, two other options. You either drop into the thick scrub and then bash your way and then pop up um, around, so you kind of sidle, or you go right, yeah, or you do this kind of the same thing on the left, sidle to the left, and then just hold on to scrub and then kind of make your way around. Pretty steep country as well, so steep, steep bridge. Anyway, I chose left and I was still pretty fatigued from the, the other climb just before. And as I was making my way around, I, so I was holding on to scrub, you know, it's pretty steep, like that kind of stuff. And unfortunately, as I was making my way around, I was out at my furthest point, so arms were like fully extended and I was going to transition to another branch with one hand on another branch. And then that branch, while I was full extended with pack on, snapped. And then I was in free fall down this uh, scrubby face. Pretty, pretty, yeah, life changing experience. Just free falling and you're like, you just, that moment where I heard the branch snap, it's like clear as day. Just, and there's like straight instant free fall. And I was probably in free fall of about three, three, four seconds just watching branches just go by my face and I was just like, hmm, is this gonna be it? <laughs> it's quite a surreal experience because you just kind of, you just accept it, you accept what's gonna be. Lucky enough, <laughs> I got caught by some overhanging branches and I was sweet ass. <laughs> no, all I got was a wee little busted lip, uh, but everything else was sweet ass. But it could have been a lot worse and I certainly know that. I was not happy afterwards in terms of just letting myself down and potentially letting others down in that, in that regards. But once I fell and I stopped, count my blessings, and then I got up, just a quick kind of check over, and then I just cracked on back up to the ridge line because you can't just wallow in your sorrows. In those moments, you can't just be shaken like a leaf. You just got to crack on. No, in all seriousness, that's what you got to do. Otherwise, you just still, you've still got a job to do, and it was bloody steep climb back up. <laughs> But anyway, that's the epic story. Uh, yeah, free fall. Don't recommend it. <laughs>